Hi everyone, I think we'll just get started. Oh, that's a bit noisy. Um, I'm Donnell McKinley, this is Chris Dempsey. I'm from Victoria University of Wellington. Chris is from New Zealand Micrographic Services. Um, Max Sullivan sends his apologies today. Max was going to be speaking with his um, Victoria University Library hat on, um, but unfortunately can't make it. Um, I do know a little bit about the project, um, as does Michael Parry, who's in the audience. So if anyone's particularly interested in... Um, and what Max was going to be talking about today, we'll have some time at the end um, that you can ask questions and we'll do our best. Otherwise, um, you're welcome to, to contact Ma uh, Max afterwards. Um, so um, it's, it's a wee panel. It's a panel of two, but we'll do our best to keep you entertained. Um, how are we going to run the session? Um, I have... Um, I'll start with my presentation and then we'll have uh, questions um, after that. Chris will follow and we'll have, uh, you'll have time to ask him questions as well. And then we'll use any time at the end um, just to sort of open up, um, open up the floor to discussion generally about crowdsourcing and certainly if you've got any questions related to uh, projects that you might have um, on the boil, you're welcome to throw them our way and we'll do our best to field them. Um, so let's get started. So... Um, as I mentioned, I'm from Victoria University. I've just started my PhD uh, in the School of Information Management. Um, my research focuses on non-profit crowdsourcing, um, and crowdsourcing in the cultural heritage sector is particularly dear to my heart. Um, my research focuses on user interface design in particular. Um, there are two main things that I'd like to talk to you about this afternoon. Um, the first, uh, first I'm going to show you why I think uh, evaluating crowdsourcing websites early in the design process can be worthwhile. Um, and I'm also going to talk about one method of evaluation uh, that it's in inexpensive and relatively easy to use. Um, before I get started, I must give credit to David Ellis and co, who gave a presentation at museums and the web a few years back and inspired the title of my talk, um, Why Evaluation is a Party at the End. It did occur to me just a few moments ago that they did stick me at the end, so <laughs> I don't know if they were trying to say something. Um, so, uh, crowdsourcing. Um, just very quickly, so that we're all on the same page, I'll just do a really quick crowdsourcing 101. Um, crowdsourcing outsources tasks traditionally performed by specific individuals uh, to a group of people or a community through an open call. Crowdsourcing author Jeff Howe explains that it isn't a single strategy, um, but an umbrella term for a highly varied group of approaches. Crowdsourcers working in, uh, the cult in cultural heritage and academic institutions share uh, two common project goals. The first is to create or enhance uh, digitised data, uh, and the second is to engage the wider community. Uh, currently, volunteers are performing an increasingly wide range of tasks, um, and it is rather a long list that I have, but I am going to go through them because you might sort of have heard about a few projects, but you might not be aware um, of the greater potential um, for volunteers. Um, some of the tasks they're involved in uh, include tagging, text correction, transcription, contextualisation, classification, curation and data collection, description, text encoding, mapping and geo-referencing, identification, interpretation and translation. Uh, this is a new project um, up on the screen here driven by the very uh, clever people at New York Public Library called Building Inspector. Um, this invites volunteers to assist with cleaning up historical map data. And if you haven't had a play with it, I do encourage you. Um, if you're coming to map, um, that camp tomorrow, maybe we can have a play with it. Um, the instructions are laugh out loud hilarious. They're just brilliant. Um, so the success of non-profit crowdsourcing initiatives relies on meeting two key objectives, uh, and they are sufficient participation and quality contribution. Um, now, meeting these project objectives requires an understanding of contextual factors, such as volunteer motivation, uh, as well as effective project and system design, and evaluation and refinements to achieve optimal performance. Um, for, you, for those of you who aren't so familiar with uh, crowdsourcing, um, a typical, we a typical uh, website for non-profit crowdsourcing um, includes a branded homepage that describes the project and invites participation, um, and then web pages for instructing volunteers and in performing tasks. 
Additional web pages are commonly used for volunteer registration, uh, presenting detailed information about the project and the project team, uh, updating project progress, volunteer accounts and profiles potentially, uh, project communication and in some cases presenting the outcome um, of the project for public use, you know, which might be um, uh, uh, open data um, for, for reuse. Um, this is another recent project uh, called Link Jazz, driven by the Pratt Institute uh, School of Library Information Science. Um, in this project, volunteers classify relationships between jazz musicians uh, to contribute to a linked open data resource. Um, again, this one is very cool. Um, if you're going to look at any um, in the next uh, hour or so, I encourage you to have a play um, on Link Jazz. Uh, so this, this quote some of you might have heard me use before, um, but I, I, think it, um, I think it deserves sort of restating. Um, usability author Steve Krug talks about the reservoir of goodwill that visitors bring to a website and explains that each problem they encounter lowers its level. The role of evaluation in the design and optimization of websites is to identify real and potential problems so that they can be re remedied in redevelopment. Uh, usability is a broad concept uh, that refers to how easy it is for users to learn a system um, and how efficiently it is for them to use, how efficient it is for them to use and how pleasant it is to use as well. Uh, some of the website elements that can impact on usability include content, language, readability, website navigation, arrangement of pa uh, page elements, consistency, visual appearance, page load speed, and the number and complexity of processes required uh, to, processes, I beg your pardon, to complete the desired action. Um, so in crowdsourcing terms, these kind of design decisions can impact on the effectiveness of our invitation uh, to participate, uh, the effectiveness of our task instructions, um, and the incentives that we put in place. Um, these design decisions can also uh, impact on the length of time volunteers spend on the site, um, efficient task completion, and um, participant return rate, whether they return or not, how often they return. Um, evaluating early in the design process can help to better meet the needs of your volunteers and potentially avoid major website fixes later on. I'm going to give you just one example. Um, I'm involved with the New Zealand Reading Experience database, which is a crowdsourced history of reading project being developed at Victoria University of Wellington. Based on uh, the UK project, which was launched um, in 1996, the NZ Read will collect reading experiences of New Zealanders from the 19th century to the present day. Volunteers will be uh, invited to identify instances of reading in diaries, letters, biographies and memoirs, from private collections, from libraries and archives, and then contribute their discoveries to the online database. Uh, the fastest and easiest way to develop a user interface for the NZ Red um, might be, well, would be, to use the uh, existing UK Red as a template, um, but our project team had a few issues with this. Um, this is just a very small um, sort of extract from a very, very long page. Um, the task interface that UK Red volunteers use to input reading experiences is currently um, a very lengthy, a somewhat daunting one-page online form. Uh, furthermore, the current UK website hasn't been subjected to usability testing and there's no requirements documentation available. Uh, so this raises the question, well, how effectively and efficiently is the UK Red Task Interface supporting rich data collection and volunteer participation? Uh, so rather than blindly adapt the UK Red template for our purposes, um, we were keen to pursue this question. Um, so earlier this year, as part of the Master of Information Studies program at Victoria, I conducted a research project on the NZ Red. The aim of the project was to produce high-level functionality and usability requirements for an NZ Red task interface and determine the extent to which the UK Red actually met these requirements. 
Um, my findings will inform the design of a working prototype to be developed in the next stage of the NZ Red project, um, and this in turn will undergo user testing before being incorporated into the overall NZ Red website design. Um, I employed several data collection techniques to produce the requirements. Um, today I'm not really focusing on, on the requirements development um, as such. I'm really just going to be focusing on the evaluation of the UK Red task interface. Um, so if you're um, interested in the requirements development, there's a, a link to the full report on my website. Um, one, of the, one of the tools I used to evaluate the usability of the UK Red Task Interface was a set of heuristics, um, which are sort of commonly thought of as rules of thumb, um, but what I would prefer you to think of as design principles in this context. Um, these uh, heuristics are short statements about what a system should do. Um, they're generally accompanied by a more detailed explanation, um, and in some cases they're accompanied by examples as well. Uh, heuristic evaluation is known as a discount evaluation method um, because it doesn't involve end users, um, which in this case would be our crowdsourcing volunteers or potential volunteers. Um, this can be time consuming and can be costly, potentially, um, and heuristic evaluation requires minimal time and resources. So um, in a nutshell, uh, evaluators are guided by a set of heuristics to determine the extent to which user interface elements comply with the design principles. Um, any breach of heuristics is commonly recorded and rated using a four level severity scale, which was developed by Mollick and Nielsen. Uh, the set of heuristics that I used um, was developed in 2012 by Petri and Power. Um, they were developed to support the design and evaluation of highly interactive websites, such as those requiring users to input information. For those of you who aren't familiar with, with heuristics, um, I'll just give you an example from that set so you know what I'm going on about. Um, one, one of these heuristics is avoid duplication or excessive effort by the users. Um, this is accompanied by their explanation, don't ask users to provide the same information more than once, and don't ask for excessive effort when this could be achieved more efficiently by the system. So guided by these 21 heuristics, I was able to identify potential difficulties associated with the UK Red Task Interface that might be impacting on the user experience, um, and then report how these might be remedied. I identified 32 potential usability problems um, related to interactivity, to content, physical presentation and information architecture. Um, of these, I rated um, six as major or high priority problems, uh, 23 as minor or low priority problems, and three as cosmetic only. To validate the results of my heuristic evaluation, I then conducted an online survey of current UK Red volunteers and potential New Zealand Red volunteers. Um, who were asked to identify usability problems associated with the UK Red interface. Uh, survey respondents, of whom there are over 100, um, identified 23 problems, uh, 13 major problems, 9 minor problems and 1 cosmetic only. Uh, consistent with my heuristic evaluation, major problems related to physical presentation, content and interactivity, um, and most problems again were related to interactivity. Um, so I said I wasn't really going to talk about requirements, but I'll just whip through them really quickly for anyone that's interested. Um, so the outcome of my research was seven high-level functionality and usability requirements for an NZ Red Task interface that supports volunteer participation and quality contribution. Uh, they were to uh, minimise user effort, support integration of the task with research processes, enable new visitors to, and contributors to understand what the task involves quickly and easily, support accurate and controlled data entry, be easy to use for people only reasonably confident with the web, support flexible structured data entry and support bilingual data entry. Uh, my research found that the UK Red Task Interface only partially meets four of the seven requirements. 
Uh, its limitations are par partially symptomatic of its age. Website design and potentially user expectations as well um, have evolved since the UK Red was last redesigned in 2009. Um, so the first takeaway from my project was that uh, using an existing crowdsourcing project template, even if it's essentially the, the same concept um, as you're, you're going ahead with, um, is, is possibly not the most effective way to serve the needs of your volunteers um, and your project objectives. Um, and the only way that you can really determine that is by um, subjecting it to some, some method of evaluation. Um, the second takeaway for me was that heuristics can be an effective um, and efficient method of evaluation. So as non-profit crowdsourcing websites are in fact highly interactive websites that require user to input information in most cases, um, the heuristics developed by Petri and Power could be used to support the design and evaluation of other crowdsourcing user interfaces. Um, however, they do have some limitations. Firstly, they were developed using a sample of government websites um, that Unlike crowdsourcing websites, you could argue, um, users would most likely visit out of necessity rather than choice, and possibly only once. Um, secondly, the set of heuristics um, by Petri and Power underplay uh, several key elements um, that can impact on volunteer participation, such as the value proposition behind the project um, and motivation and incentive. Uh, thirdly, they don't incorporate any relevant crowdsourcing research, such as the tips for crowdsourcing published by Rose Holly around 2009-2010, um, or the guidelines published by um, Michael Iscarides in 2012. So um, the aim of my PhD research is to develop a, to develop a set of heuristics for non-profit crowdsourcing uh, that supports user interface design and evaluation practice. Um, the initial design of my set of heuristics will draw on Petri and Power's heuristics and other relevant sources that I've mentioned, um, and then these will be um, evaluated and refined over the course of next year. I'll be making early versions of the heuristics available to practitioners for use, um, and I'll be looking for feedback. So if you're interested, um, please see me later, or you're welcome to follow my blog for updates. Um, so that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening. As I mentioned, um, there's a link to the full NZ Red report um, on my website. I'll also be making this presentation and the slides available there. Um, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions.